you how to change your CV axles. You want to change it and you know it's bad when, um, when you turn and it starts clicking a lot or when you're accelerating and um, the car starts to vibrate like dramatically. Um, I, went, I had a really bad CV axle one time and like, I couldn't even turn the car because the joints were so, were so messed up and it just shattered and it just it was completely bad. Uh, the CV axles look, look like this. Today I'll be changing two of them, my driver and passenger side, because mine are completely messed up. Uh, first, you're going to want to uh, buy your new axles, and then you're going to want to jack up your car, the front of the car, so you can take off the, both the wheels. Make sure your e-brake is all the way up, and um, you want to find this supportive frame underneath your car in the front, and then you're going to jack up that frame. After you jack up the, um, the car, you want to put on jack stands so the car doesn't fall on your face when you're working on, on the car underneath. Now you want to take off um, the wheels. And make sure you take off in the star pattern, and when you do it, put it back in, you put it back in the star pattern, like always. After you take off the wheels, you're going to... Um, well, for Hondas, they have an indent right here. You want to take a screwdriver and pop out the indention, and then you're going to take off this, um, the nut that holds onto the hub at the tip of the CV axle. After you take off the, the huge nut at the end of the CV axle, you're going to want to take off this castle nut right here. And there's a cotter pin. So you take off the cotter pin and then you loosen up the castle nut. You can see the castle nut is off from right there. It looks like this. It looks like a castle. And it has a pin right there. So you take off the pin. After you take off the castle nut, you're going to take off this bolt right here. Um, you need two screw, um, ratchets and sockets on the side. On this side too, has it right here. Um, this is called the wishbone. It wraps around your CV axle. So it looks like a wishbone right here, you see it? So you want... See? I just took the nut off, the other side. After you take out the castle nut, you're going to have to um, pop the ball joint. And this is the joint right here. You want to pop it off of the control arm right here. And it comes off. So, um, this, I have my own way of taking it off. So, basically, I'm going to jack up. I'm going to jack up the hub. So, it goes up like this. And then, I'm going to wedge a thick screwdriver in there. And then, I'm going to lower it. I'm going to lower the jack. And then, when the jack lowers, it's going to apply a lot of pressure to the top and the bottom. And it's going to pop the joint. You're, you're going to hear it. It's kind of loud. Um, it's really noticeable, but that's what that, that's how I do it. There's different ways. This is actually easier than I thought. The, um, I just jacked it up, and the joint just detached itself. So it's a lot easier than I thought. You don't have to wedge a screwdriver. I did that before, but I don't know why it's so loose this time. After you pop the, um, the separate the joint from the control arm, you can take off the hub like this. And then you can you can rest it on a jack. So you don't protect your brake lines or... Axle comes right off. Left the axle hanging on the side right here. Now we're gonna disconnect it from the transmission. And what you need, you're gonna need a crowbar. I use this crowbar, but um, basically you have the transmission housing, and then you have your um, your CV axle, the housing of it. You're gonna take the crowbar and wedge it in between, and then just pry it off the transmission housing. It should come right off. Pop right off, you can see it. I wedged, I wedged the crowbar in there just like that. Just like that, and I kept prying it off. Surprisingly, no transmission fluid, which I'm really happy. Comes right off. Right now, I'm taking the long bolt off the wishbone. So, I'm gonna take it off. So you can detach the wishbone from the control arm. The bolt came off. Up here, now you're going to separate it.
Holy crap, so much grease. The boot is ripped. As you can see, the CV axle is off and it is dripping all over the place. Once you've gotten your axles out, um, you're going to get the new one. This is my new one. And you're going to throw this end back in, put it back into the splines, into the um, transmission housing. Um, you don't have to do this, but I read on a forum that people said to put um, CV joint on the ends of the CV axle. Uh, I don't think you're supposed to do this, but people do say to do it on the forum, so might as well. When you line up the splines, when you line up the splines on the CV axle in the transmission housing, you're going to want to, um, to force, force the housing of the AC, AV, CV axle in into the transmission housing so it's nice and snug. You heard that snap? Once you hear that snap, that means it's in and it's snug and it's perfect. So my CV axle is in. When the wishbone and the control arm was taken apart, you want to um, slip the new axle so that the shaft goes in between here. And you put the um, wishbone back onto the little control arm. It takes, it'll take some time. Now I'm just putting the bolt back in. Then I have the screw right here. And then that will connect the control arm again. All right, the bolt is in for the wishbone. And right here, you see the joint. You have the... Um, Control arm and then the ball joint right there. You want to slip it in, slip it through the hole, through the through the control arm, and then you're gonna put the castle nut in. See how the um, the thread for the screw, the bolt is um, seen through the control arm. Put the castle nut back in, and then remember when you're done tightening, put the ca um, the cotter pin through the hole. When you put the castle nut back in and you tighten all the way, get um, line came with a new nut right here. So you want to put it in. It has to be nice and tight. Make sure you have a tool that fits the nut. After it's tight, um, this nut, this bolt and nut requires a little lock. So you're gonna take a screwdriver and hammer it in. Oh, you can see it. But see the indent right there. You're gonna hammer it so you can bend the metal so that it locks into the um, the CV axle's end. During during the procedure, you might have touched the um, the rotors where it makes contact with the brake pads. So you want it to be um, clean again, use, um, use brake fluid. Alright, that should remove all your oil from your fingers. And now, the best part, put back the wheels and then you're done. Like I said before, taking off the wheel and putting in the wheel, you use a star pattern. Up, down, left, right, or any way you want. Just as long as it's across from each other every time you tighten it or loosen it. Keeps it balanced. Star pattern. I like to double check just in case so I don't drive and the wheels fall off. And we're done. After both the wheels have gone in, you want to lower the car. Once the car is lowered, you're all done. Um, you want like how you do all the things, you can just test drive it and see if it works perfectly. But I'm pretty sure it's going to feel a lot better than what I had before. Yeah, that's it. I hope this helps.